I would be inclined to say that this isn't just wear and tear. It's a design flaw. I have not one, not two, but three Bamboo Lab Axum Carbons that are currently broken. So in a previous video, I mentioned how two of my Bamboo Lab Axum Carbons had broken. But after just a thousand hours of printing, two out of these four printers are currently out of commission. This one has an issue with the heated bed, and this one is giving me an error related to the four sensors that are used for nozzle probing. My assumption is that these were gonna be difficult to repair. So I was putting it off, and I've put it off for quite a long time. And in the process of putting it off, a third printer experienced a similar failure. So I think it's about time I bite the bullet and try to repair these and figure out whether or not it's actually as difficult as I'm perceiving it to be. So naturally, the first thing to do when dealing with a broken printer is diagnose what the issue is. Luckily, the Bamboo Lab printers have a nice system of error codes that'll tell you exactly what's gone wrong. We should contact support and see if they have some advice for us on what we should do. So in order to open a ticket and get support, we need to export the log file from the printer. So I did just that and I waited a few days. I heard back from them on this printer, which was the force sensor issue. And I guess the log files gave some good evidence as to what's gone wrong because they provided immediately the solution, which was to replace the heat bed signal cable. With this other printer, the issue wasn't as obvious. I was given an error message on the screen saying that the heated bed failed to get up to temperature. But when I uploaded the log file, opened a ticket, support couldn't tell me exactly what had gone wrong. So they asked me to inspect for damage to the cables, to just do some visual inspection, make sure everything is seated properly, all the connectors. After I did all of that, the issue still hadn't gone away. So I followed up with that information and they told me that I should go ahead and replace the heat bed signal cable. So the exact same root cause, supposedly, as the other printer, despite the error codes being different. And the third printer that also failed also has the heat bed signal cable issue. So we're gonna have to go ahead and replace that three times. So we now know what's wrong with each of these three printers. And it all comes down to this, the heat bed signal cable. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that on all three printers. But before we dive in, we have to familiarize ourselves with the process. The actual instructions for installing this look pretty intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. And this is kind of what I was concerned about. This to me is a black box. I know very little of what's going on inside because I didn't put this together. That's in contrast to something like a Voron or a Prusa kit where I've put the printer together and I know where everything goes more or less. And therefore the prospect of taking it apart doesn't intimidate me that much. This is a different story, but we're gonna go ahead and get that done. And I'm sure by the time I do this three times, it's gonna seem a lot easier than the first time. The repair process begins with disassembly. We first need to remove the back panel, including the buffer and the spool holder. There's a variety of screws that will need to be removed, including this one that supposedly voids our warranty. We can then slide the panel off. Next, we'll remove the purge chute. There's two screws up above, and we'll also need to remove this cable clip that holds on the cable bundle. Next, we'll remove a variety of small screws so we can extract this plastic cover and get access to the motherboard. Once inside, we're gonna wanna unplug the heat bed cable and remove the plastic connector by pushing in on the metal prongs and pulling out the wires. We'll then remove the heat bed signal cable itself by using a heat gun to loosen the silicone glue before pulling it out of the board. Next, we're gonna remove the right-hand panel. There's a variety of screws, some on the back, some inside, some on the front, and a few on the bottom as well. So the grounding wire is fed through this little hole down into the corner, and we need access to that to remove it. We just needed to loosen the panel so we could flex it out of the way to get into that lower corner. Then we pull out the ground wire and remove the textile sleeve that's around the cable bundle for the heated bed. Now we're gonna remove the bed itself by removing two screws for each of the three brackets, including a few more that are supposedly going to void our warranty. Nice. Then we can turn the bed over. The objective is to remove this entirely from the printer. So we need to feed the wires back through this bracket on the rear lead screw. As you're going through this process, it's a good idea to keep track of which screws go where because you are gonna to need to put them back in the right place later on. With the bed removed from the printer, we'll unscrew this grounding screw and the three bed leveling nuts. With those removed, we can turn this bracket over where we can see the three force sensors that are used for nozzle probe, as well as the heat bed signal cable, which is ultimately what we were trying to access. 
There's a little bit of silicone glue that we'll need to pick off, and then we can pull the cable out. This is the new cable. It's a little bit different than the old one, which I'll touch on later. We'll feed the cable back through the bracket and plug it back into the board, before covering it with silicone glue, which is supplied with the replacement cable. Now we're going to reverse the disassembly, reinstalling the leveling nuts and the grounding screw, before reinserting the bed into the frame of the printer and feeding the cables back through that bracket on the rear lead screw. This is the most fiddly bit of this entire process because this hole is quite small and the cables are large. Eventually I was able to get them in, but it was not without frustration. Then we can turn the bed back over and place it back on the brackets attached to each of the lead screws. Next, we move the bed all the way to the bottom of the printer and reinstall the screws to secure it in place. I'll then move the bed back up so it's in a more convenient position before reinstalling the textile sleep. We'll need to re-tape it on both ends the original tape is no longer sticky, so I needed to use some electrical tape I had lying around. We'll then feed the grounding wire back through these cable management clips and into the rear corner before screwing it back into place. I'll then reinsert the heat bed wires into the plastic connector before plugging it back into the motherboard. The heat bed signal wire also gets reconnected, and they do suggest you add silicone glue here, but I just chose not to do this. I'll then reinstall the purge chute using the two screws and clip the cable bundle back on. Before I button everything up, I thought it would be a good idea to do a self-test to make sure it actually works and I don't need to take it back apart again. Fortunately, it was all systems go. This is when you're gonna thank yourself for keeping track of which screws go where. We'll put the panels back on, starting with the right one and then the rear one. Reinstall the filament buffer and the spool holder, and that's the repair complete. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, your partners in prototyping. That could be PCB fabrication, sheet metal forming, CNC milling, Whatever sort of project you can dream up, they can help you out. Simply upload your design files, select your parameters for material, quantity, etc., and they'll produce it and mail it to you so you can put it into your project, whatever that may be. So the next time you need support in your projects, make sure you check out PCB Way at the link in the description. All right, back to the video. Phew. All right, we're back in business with one out of three printers. When I was in there, I noticed something kind of concerning. The strain relief on this heat bed signal cable does not seem adequate. It's bent at a pretty tight radius and you can see the wear on this cable. I took my multimeter to this old cable and I was able to flex it and get it to disconnect or throw an open circuit. So I know for certain that this was the root cause. This cable broke after just a thousand hours of use. In the grand scheme of things, a thousand hours is really not that much. I would be inclined to say that this isn't just wear and tear, it's a design flaw. And I think Bamboo knows that because the new heat bed signal cable is quite different. They've changed the cable sleeving. It's got a textile wrap instead of this heat shrink and the wire itself appears to be different. So one's done, now it's time to do two more. All right, so I just finished repairing the second machine. It took me a little over an hour this time, which was considerably less than the first time I did it. One time-saving trick was not to remove the entire right-hand panel, which just isn't really necessary. All we're trying to do is get to the grounding screw at the back. So I just removed as many screws as necessary so I could flex the panel out of the way and get in to unscrew that rounding screw. That saved me a little bit of time and just the familiarity with the process as well. I was more efficient overall. I have lead screw grease all over my hands. By the time it came to doing the third printer, I got lazy, like really lazy. I cut corners everywhere I could, which included not fully removing the bed assembly from the printer. In the end, I only saved about 10 minutes, so it really wasn't worth cutting these corners and risking damaging something in the process. Well, that'll do it. Three broken printers are now three fixed printers. I'm really glad to have these repaired after so long procrastinating doing that, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. By the time I got around to doing the third one, I got it down to just under an hour, around 50 minutes. And the overall process wasn't particularly difficult, although there were some fiddly bits and some things that made it clear that these printers weren't designed for repairability. For instance, the hole where you feed all of the cables from the heated bed back to the motherboard is really small. So you need to take off connectors from the cables, 
you need to fish out all of the wires before you can push in the new ones and things like that that just add up to extra time and labor to get these repaired. If that cable hole had just been a little bit bigger, you could have done the one cable, which is the keypad signal cable, and left all the other ones in place, saving quite a bit of time. And as well, the grounding cable location. If you want to get the ground cable off for the heated bed, you need to take the entire right-hand panel off. But it seems to me that they could have put that grounding cable in the center back frame, and in doing so, you could have just removed one panel and not two in order to repair that heated bed. Where I do have to give credit to Bamboo is to their tech support for responding to my ticket in a timely manner and giving me actionable steps that I could take to repair this. The documentation on their wiki was detailed and thorough and it provided all of the information I needed. So they get points for tech support, they get points for documentation, they lose some points for ease of maintenance, but where they definitely get some points is in the availability of spare parts and the cost of spare parts. I was able to order the heat bed signal cable for I think around $5 and it came within a few days. I do have to say that I honestly believe this is a design flaw. This isn't normal wear and tear. It'd be one thing if it was one printer that had this issue, but the fact that three of my printers had this exact same issue leads me to believe that this cable was not adequately spec'd for the bending that occurs when the heat bed goes up and down. Now I know some of you have been using your printers for thousands upon thousands of hours and you've never had any such issue and perhaps you think I just have bad luck or it's somehow user error. Well, it's definitely not. I think what happened is that these printers print the same object over and over and that object is around 150 millimeters tall, I would say. So the range of motion that the print bed is going through, it's in this kind of spot where that heat bed signal cable is going to get stretched and compressed over and over again throughout the course of successive prints. If you're printing something small and the heat bed doesn't travel through its full range of motion, yeah, this crappy cable might last for thousands and thousands of hours. But for me, using it in this mode, it only lasted a thousand hours, or in some cases, slightly less, which is not acceptable. It should not fail at that point. I think Bamboo knew that, which is why the version two of the heat bed signal cable has been revised and it looks quite different. This is a failure mode that I think a lot of people are going to see. Maybe not that many people have seen it yet, but as these printers get worn in and they continue to get used, there's going to be some finite lifespan to these cables, and you're gonna find yourself having to go through the same repair process that I did. Of course, they had a similar issue related to the strain of the cable on the Bamboo A1. Those were all recalled because it was a potential fire hazard. Main seated bed, strain on that cable, yeah there's a shock risk. This is a signal cable. It's not carrying mains voltage, so the risk is a lot less. But it's definitely an inconvenience when this ultimately breaks. I've seen at least one other report in the user group of somebody having this issue. And this individual, I believe, was in Australia, where the consumer rights, consumer protection laws are quite stringent. And they say that if there's a repair required that is not reasonable to assume the end customer can take on, that the company should take that on themselves. To me, this is not something that the end user is responsible for in terms of regular wear and tear. This is a fault of the design, not the fault of the user. So I hope you learned something here today and you enjoyed this look at the repairability of Bamboo Lab printers. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this. My name's Taylor, this is YHK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.